The Rio Link cameras have four ways in which you can access them. They have a, an app for Mac, they have an app for Windows, uh, they all have onboard web servers so you can access them on a web browser and the one that most people are going to be using I think is the mobile app and that's what I want to look at today. So I want to go, I'm going to go through the app in all its glory so this will take a while uh, so stick with me. Uh, here it is on my screen, I'm going to go into it right now. And the first thing it does is come to the opening screen where it shows me a preview of all my cameras. They're not actually connecting, it's just the last time they were accessed. So you can see the living room there at the top is still a nighttime view because that was the last time I accessed the cameras. So I've got three, you've got one for the living room, one for the kitchen and one for our youngest son's bedroom. In fact, you can see him asleep there at the bottom. In the top left hand corner, we have the settings for the actual bit of software itself. So there's nothing to do with the cameras as such. It's for the app. So if I open that up now, you can see that at the top, I can change my profile information, uh, just picture, nickname, that type of thing, and uh, which cloud accounts my profile is bound to. Closing out of there, the rest of the stuff is just kind of links apart from the bottom one, which is settings, and that's got some useful stuff in it. So the top one doesn't seem that useful, but adjusting the device order is a really nice touch, just being able to sort of drag these down and you know drag these around, because a lot of the time it can make a lot more sense to have them in a certain order in, in the list, you know, it might be just the way your house is organized. I don't know, I find that a nice touch, not necessary really, but a really nice thing to have. Message sound settings lets you change the um, settings for the um, push notifications. You can have a password on the app, have it dark or light. Clearing the cache, it does create cache on your phone and you can clear it in there. You can see there that I've got 94 meg in there so I can just clear that down really simply like that. And you also have your automatic live view so that when you open the app, it launches the cameras. And um, adding devices automatically, data usage warning, all this sort of stuff. Stretch mode is useful because these cameras are 4.3 aspect ratio. 4.3 is great for cameras because it allows more vertical resolution. And that's good for people because you can, you're more likely to, the cap, to capture the face of someone when you've got more of a square image rather than a widescreen image. And uh, stretch mode just means that the image will be stretched to fit on phones, which to me, yeah, you get a stretched image and it looks a bit weird, but it fills the screen and that to me is the better option. Okay, so going back and out of here, we'll now take a look at just adding a camera. The top right hand side here, you can see you can add a camera and there are two options to do that. Uh, actually, no, there are three options. You can scan the QR code as it's looking for now. It's opened the camera and it's scanning the QR code. You can enter the actual ID of the camera, or you can look on your LAN for cameras and you can see immediately here that it's picked up a few of those cameras on there. So let's go out of there. And then you have your cloud options here at the top. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you those because I'm in the UK. Rio Link don't currently offer cloud options for the UK. They've really got to get that sorted and I hope they do soon. Uh, but uh, you will see an extra option in there to access all your cloud uh, information and all your cloud recordings on the app through there. Uh, at the moment, I've just got smart home, op uh, smart home options, so unfortunately I can't demo that for you. Going into devices, now I have living room here and I can go to the cog here to get to the settings for the living room camera. And at the top, you can see clearly how much space is left on the SD card. Of course, mine is just purging as it's going along, so it constantly is basically constantly full. It's a one to eight gigabit, uh, sorry, one to eight gigabyte SD card that's in there, micro SD card, and it's just running through, and it keeps about seven days at the current settings. You can see the network information. If I go into that there, you can see the different networks it's found nearby and which one it's connected to. Signal strength on there, I in my opinion, is a little bit underestimated. It connects to stuff even when there's virtually no signal, which, you know, your phone probably wouldn't. So it's a little bit of a, a, a low um, signal meter and you can have it that low. So like now you'd think, well, that's not so good, but it's absolutely fine. That kind of signal is no problem for this camera. Let's go into the display options. You can rotate the screen. So if you mount the camera upside down, changing the quality options here, you have two types of um, stream on this camera. You have a clear stream and you have a fluent stream. The clear stream here, you can edit the resolution 
Uh, max is 2560 by 1920, which is what this is set to at the moment. Frame rate maxes out at 20 frames a second. I have mine to set to uh, 15. And max bit rate, if I go into one of these options, you can see that more clearly. So there, there's our maximum resolution. Frame rate, if I just move up slightly, default is 15, but you can go up to 20 if you want. Probably not necessary for CCTV. Max bit rate actually maxes out at 4096 um, kilobits. But that's quite a lot. Um, you might want that for to be sure of clear stuff when there's motion. But um, I think 4096 is quite a lot because you have to remember that every time you view that camera through your local network or 4G or 5G, you are streaming that much data if you're going to view the high image. Now, of course, you can just view the low quality image, i.e. the fluent one, and that's a 640 by 480 stream at 15 frames per second. But let's see, there are other options on that as well. You can only do that resolution and it does a default of seven, which to me is ridiculously low. So I'd put that up to 15 and the uh, the kilobits per second, the bit rate rather, is uh, I've got mine set to 256. Default is down at 160. So that's really nice and efficient as far as data goes. So that's the quality setting there. Anti-flicker, region 60 hertz or 50 hertz, day and night. Well, that's going to switch automatically. And then you've got the, cap the position of the text on the screen and whether you have the Rio Link watermark. And then you've got some other options down at the bottom here. You can adjust the exposure of the camera and there's a backlight option as well, which I can't show you too well now because of uh, the fact that it's a sort of pretty well lit camera there. But if I go into it anyway, I'll turn it on. No, it's not going to make any difference there, is it? I don't think. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so it just, in, just brings up the shadows a little bit on the image. And uh, that can really make a big difference at night time. So worth having. I, I keep it off, really. It, I find that the image is perfectly sufficient on its own. The 3D digital noise reduction, I covered that on the review of the camera, and that's a really nice addition. It cleans up the image very well reduces the uh, noise overall and means that the, the amount of um, bits that you supply, i.e. the bit rate of the stream, doesn't have to be so high because there isn't as much motion generated from the noise. So some good stuff and that we've only just covered that one bit. Alarm settings, motion detection here, sensitivity, re um, you can change the sensitivity from uh, very insensitive down at one right up to 50 which is sensitive and you can have a sensitivity schedule as well so you can adjust different times of the day for different sensitivities uh, so you could reduce it in the day and increase it at night or vice versa because so, sometimes cameras can be a bit more sensitive at night they, they detect motion more easily because of noise in the image and things so you can reduce that sensitivity at night time and you can do that you can add multiple schedules by the way That's, uh, even though it's only showing one at the moment motion zones well, here's the camera, and that's the last image it took there. And on the phone, if you don't want to receive, let's say I don't not bothered about the sofa or something like that, then I can just color over the sofa and say I don't want to detect any motion on there, but I do, or let's say the door or whatever, but I do want to leave the windows in. So I can just rub all that stuff out, and that won't detect motion in that area. It's pretty good resolution motion areas. So uh, that's, yeah, nice, nice little uh, feature that and let's cancel out of there and push notifications that is of course kind of email and messages when you get motion on the camera email alerts can be set up through here i haven't got that set up at the moment but um, of course that's just to send an email to your account the siren option is an alarm on the camera when motion's de detected to obviously put someone off if they are on your premises or something like that they'll hear a noise through the camera itself you can share the camera with other people. So if they have the app installed, rather than having to add it through the accessing your network and all that type of stuff, you can just give them that QR code and they can just easily add the camera. Then we have advanced sections around audio. Tons of stuff you can do in here as well. You can add different users to access this. So at the moment, on I have myself, but I also have my partner as well. So Kate has a uh, user profile so she can't access all the stuff to kind of change all the settings but she can see the cameras and she can uh, you know see what's going on uh, so there are two accounts really just an admin account and a user account the audio you can record oh sorry um, uh, date and time 
I don't know why we date and time. So date and time can be synchro- synchronized with your phone, but it can also, you also in the uh, Windows and Mac app, you can uh, sync with an NTP server too. So no need for that. FTP upload stuff. I've got my details in here. <clears throat> I'm not going to go into FT- FTP settings because it's got, uh, in fact, yes, I will because bl- I'll blur out the necessary information. You can have FTP upload, and this is how I actually send images and video up to an FTP server and uh, I can choose what type of stuff gets sent here down the bottom and how much of a delay there is so at the moment I'm sending the lower quality video but I'm also sending snapshot images as well when motion is detected at a certain time really good that this these cameras support FTP upload that sort of puts them above many other cameras because of the fact that they're not kind of all tied and locked into the same system Option to record audio or not, infrared lights, auto, most of the time you're going to want that set, set to, but you can if you want, just turn them off all the time. And the status LED is just a tiny blue LED on the front of the camera, and you can reboot that through there as well. So there we go. There they are the options, the main options in settings. I'm going to go into the camera now, and you can see that, well, that's what's happening in our living room right now not much really uh the live stream is running you can see the data rate at the top left hand side because this is currently showing you the fluent stream rather than the high quality stream so it's only streaming at about it's about 300 kilobits per second uh it did say 256 so it's gone a little bit over i'm not sure if that's because of audio or not but um <clears throat> you can pause the live, live stream here you can listen to the audio here and you can take a snapshot here. And when you take a snapshot, it's great because it just drops it to the bottom like this. And you can it saves it directly to your camera roll. It doesn't go via the app or anything like that. It puts it straight to the camera roll on the phone. And there are options there to share it as well. And the same with the video. If I record a video, you can see in the top left, top right hand side, it's telling me how much of that video has been recorded. And stop it again, drops it in. You can share it through there, but it's also put it in the camera roll of my phone. I can switch between fluent, balanced, and five, the five full five megapixel on here. So if I load the high stream, then you can see that it's, uh, well, improved the quality quite a lot. You probably can't tell exactly on there but because of the fact the screen's relatively small. But hopefully you can see a difference between the two. And then if I press the uh, button here, then that will give you the option to um, uh, rotate it and just puts it full screen and full width. Um, what else do we have? Right, top right hand side, we've got these three three dots, and the immersive view is a nice uh, nice option that immediately drops all th- all your cameras into a screen without any of the options. So if I do that now, you can see all the cameras start their live stream. They've got no audio on, but they all start their live stream, and that's what all the cameras are currently showing. Okay, uh, down the bottom we have options where you can click to talk through the camera. So if I tap on there now, it'll all my, anything I say will come through the camera in the relevant room. And the clips option is really nice. I like. I wasn't, wasn't sure about this to start with, but I really like this. What this does is it takes a section of the screen. So I think it takes a uh, 640 by 360, uh, sorry, 640 by 480 section of the screen. And rather than just zooming in, it actually streams it differently so if i set let will give you an example so if i set this to high i'm currently streaming at two two megabits per second which is quite a lot or two and a half megabits per second there in the top left top right uh, top left hand side of the screen you can see the uh, current data rate if i do a clip i can take a portion of the screen i want to look at something specifically i can just move it around here on the screen and what that's now doing is generating a new stream and only streaming that smaller amount of data so you can see the data rate at the top left hand side is now dropped to 250 about 256 kilobits per second so it's taking us dynamically sort of taking a portion of the screen generating a new stream and sending that to you so you can move around see really really good detail and that's why now you can see that the option here has changed to low because you're essentially looking at a low quality stream but only a very small portion of the camera sensor it's a really, really good option and an easy way to just jump around and have a look at some detail. So you might want to, you know, there might be someone. I mean, still pretty good quality though, isn't it? 
Oh, a nappy thing there. Anyway, that's the, that's how clips work, and they it's a really really useful feature. Definitely uh, something that I use regularly. Okay, looking at the PTZ functionality. This is how you move the camera, and it's just a sort of joystick thing. I'm not going to move the camera because it is set up at the moment, but um, you can also go into zoom and adjust the zoom on the camera and adjust the focus on the camera manually if you want. The camera will autofocus, but you can also disable that in the Windows or Mac app. And the playback section, it's the, no, it's detected some motion there. Did I, did I move anything? Or was it someone walking past outside? Not sure. Oh, another thing to point out, you can see that there are three dots above the image. That's because I have three cameras. If there was only one camera, then I don't think there would be any dots at all. But you can sw swipe between the cameras and they load up and start straight away. So here we go. Just easily swipe between them. The playback side of things is really nice too. This is currently set to be recording permanently. So these cameras are online all the time and uh, they record to the SD cards and then they record they also have a schedule to record uh, to record motion and uh, sorry when there's motion detected they will send the images over oh, that that's only at night time I don't want that happening all the time so I can just view here at the bottom I get the sample images of a particular time and not only does it show me a thumbnail it also shows me a moving thumbnail as well so it takes a small number of frames from that time a bit awkward to show you actually because there's nothing happened so i'm going to scroll forward in the day to the morning let's say 20 past 7 in the morning there's probably something happening then so you can see there the bottom left one it shows you pretty much what happens on that on that uh, little segment of time these are five minute clips on this camera you can adjust it the length of the clip as well. You can have it here at the bottom sh only show you alarm videos, but I can easily go into one of these and I can, uh, so my, my son was here sat with his blanket watching TV. So I'm gonna go into that one. So this is now a recording. It's a high quality recording. And I can zoom in by pinching on the screen. So I can just go in like this. I can have a look at a bit more detail. So he's got his breakfast there. And <laughs> he's not picking his nose, is he? <laughs> so, you know, you can see the kind of quality you get. Now, this is in fairly low light as well because the curtains are still drawn. But, I mean, zoom you can zoom right in here, like really close. And you can see the uh, Duplo there on the uh, floor. But this is, the, you know, it's pretty decent quality that you're getting. And uh, this is, remember, this is recorded footage now. This is being played back, not live footage so this is the footage at two megabits per second and uh, yeah it's decent quality if you want to download a particular video then you click on the download button here and it gives you the option to download a 30 second segment i wish that could be changed actually i wish that could be a minute or more whatever but you can easily adjust that segment so you can say is this the bit i want well i'm going to just adjust it to a different segment here so it's all within this five minute clip so i want to go here and yeah, that's the bit I want, and then I can just click download, and it takes it, and again, puts it in your camera roll. If you want to go to a different video, you can either scroll the videos across here, and it just regenerates all the thumbnails for you, or you can just move them across at the bottom. Honestly, playback side of things is superb. Really, really like it. You've got the number of days here, so this is actually showing that I've got six days at the moment, isn't it? So I can jump back to the 20 let's say the 22nd of september like this and there we go brings up the footage straight away for that particular camera let's go to a different camera and i'm going to go to the 22nd for that camera and i want to look at something that happened at uh, half four in the morning so i'm going to go to roughly half four and then i've got the precise time so this one you can see this this camera is set to two minutes of footage I actually want to set them all to five minutes, but um, that, this one's set to two minutes. You can see by the two minutes uh, here that uh, this one is um, <clears throat> only recording two-minute segments. So if I just click play on now on that now, there we go. So this is the kitchen at night time, half four in the morning, really not much happening. But at any point, I can say, right, I want to screenshot that, and let's save that to my camera roll. I'm going to zoom in here like this, and I'm going to snapshot that as well. 
Um, in fact, no, it, it captures a whole image, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, so there we go. I mean, playing stuff is dead straight, dead straightforward. And there you go. I, I think that's about it. I'm just going to double check the settings from here. Um, oh, yeah, there is one more section in here that I didn't cover. If you go into the actual camera itself, it gives you information about the camera. You can go into your storage, find out how much you've got left, format your storage, your network information, stuff like this. All that kind of technical stuff and detail about the camera is in the uh, top section there where the camera is listed. So I think this is a really superb mobile app for a camera, way better than any uh, from competing brands, I would say, at this uh, this price point. Um, I'm sure the apps for kind of your more expensive cameras are really, really great too. But honestly, this app is reliable. It uh, doesn't crash on the phone. It uh, does use a lot of battery when you're in it, but it's also doing a fair amount as well. So I absolutely love it. I hope this overview has been helpful for you. If you are thinking about buying the cameras, I'll put links in the, the uh, description. But um, yeah, I hope you found this uh, useful uh, in knowing how you know how this uh, how, the whole, how the whole mobile app works and stuff. But uh, if you've got any questions on it, what, what it can and can't do, do let me know in the uh, comments, and uh, I will speak to you soon.